Hello, George Romanich here. Today we are going to talk about different layers in our atmosphere. Every layer that we describe will be characterized by different temperature profile in respect to the adjacent layer. Now, by me saying this, you can already see that the profile of temperature in our atmosphere is profoundly different compared to the profiles of pressure and density that I described a few videos ago. In the case of pressure and density, we always had exponential decrease with the altitude. In the case of temperature, the situation gets a little bit more complicated and different layers are characterized with different profiles. In some cases, profiles are linear, for example, linear decrease with the altitude. In some layers in our atmosphere, temperature has nonlinear profile. For example, nonlinear increase with the height. This is very simple, no equations. The only thing we need is a chopstick. Let's do it. This figure shows how temperature changes with height in our atmosphere. Temperature profile is represented with thick red curve. X axis is temperature in degrees Celsius every 20 degrees from minus 100 to plus 20. Y axis is height in kilometers and the increment is 20 kilometers, as you can see. The first layer in the atmosphere is called the troposphere. Almost all weather that is of importance for us takes place in the troposphere. Storms, clouds, hurricanes, precipitation, that is all in the troposphere. In troposphere, temperature decreases linearly with height. Linearly means straight line. The average temperature around the globe at the sea level is 15 degrees Celsius. The troposphere is about 11 kilometers high and the temperature at those altitudes is around minus 56 degrees Celsius. In troposphere, temperature decreases with the height because atmosphere is predominantly heated by the surface. So further we are from the surface, the colder it gets. The top of the troposphere is called tropopause. Now, I said that troposphere is 11 kilometers deep, but that is not everywhere around the world. The depth of the troposphere is around 9 kilometers in the polar regions and around 17 kilometers in the tropical regions. This has to do with the fact that pressure decreases faster in cold air than in warm air. In uh, our video on hypsometric equation, you will remember that we said, let's assume these are two pressure surfaces. They are further apart if the air between them is warm than they are if the air between them is cold. And that is why troposphere is deeper in tropics than it is in the polar regions. I suggest you check my video on hypsometric equation. The next layer in our atmosphere is stratosphere. And this layer is between approximately 11 kilometers and 47 kilometers above surface. The top of this layer is stratopause. Here, temperature does not decrease with the height. Instead, temperature is first fairly constant and then it is actually increasing with the height. Temperature tends to, as we can see, overall increase with the height in the stratosphere because of ozone that absorbs UV light and protects all us living creatures from harmful impacts of UV radiation. The highest concentration of ozone is between 15 and 30 kilometers above the surface. Now it is interesting to note that while all light aircraft fly in the troposphere, like those that uh, spray some chemicals to kill mosquitoes, the commercial aircrafts tend to fly in stratosphere, in the lower stratosphere. Military airplanes can reach even higher altitudes. For example, SR-71 Blackbird flies at 25.9 km in the stratosphere. Russian Sukhoi Su-57 flies at 20.1 or 20 kilometers above the surface. However, 
these aircraft are overpowered by weather balloons that can reach 39 to 40 kilometers above Earth's surface before they explode. The next layer in our atmosphere is mesosphere. In mesosphere, temperature again decreases with altitude, and the top of this layer is called mesopause. This layer is roughly between 50 kilometers and 85 kilometers above the surface. The coldest temperature on our planet are usually found at the top of the mesosphere. They are between minus 80 and minus 96, 97 degrees Celsius. Mesosphere is also perhaps the least understood layer in our atmosphere. Weather balloons and aircrafts cannot reach mesosphere, and satellites indeed provide useful information, but they are still much better to measure atmospheric properties in the lower region of the atmosphere. So we don't really have a lot of data in the mesosphere. Some researchers are using sounding rockets to probe this layer, but these measurements are of course infrequent. For instance, it is interesting to note most meteors vaporizes in the mesosphere. There are also certain types of clouds that we found here, and these are called noctilucent clouds or polar mesospheric clouds. They are very peculiar and we don't exactly know how they form because there is not a lot of water vapor here to form these clouds compared to troposphere where we have a lot of water vapor compared to mesosphere. Another beautiful phenomena in mesosphere are lightning sprites, as you can see on your screen. These beautiful things form above thunderstorms, they are electrical phenomena, not properly understood, but whatever we know about them I will explain in a separate video when I start my uh, playlist on atmospheric electricity. Here we see temperature again decreases with the height, and it is for two reasons. One, we are now far away from the surface, so there is no surface to heat the atmosphere, and two, there are few gas molecules to absorb sun's radiation in comparison to what we had in stratosphere where ozone was absorbing UV light. Therefore, temperature is decreasing with the height. Now, I would like you to keep in mind that air density here is extremely, extremely low. To demonstrate that, I will tell you that 99 0.9% of the mass of our atmosphere is below mesopause. Also, you might want to remember that stratosphere and mesosphere together are called middle atmosphere. So this is middle atmosphere and this is lower atmosphere, which is troposphere. The next layer that I would like to discuss is thermosphere. Thermosphere is between approximately 85 and 600 kilometers. Notice that here we have a break in the axis. So from 140 we jump to 600 kilometers. And then we will further jump to 10,000 kilometers. Again, there is a discontinuity. Here in thermosphere, density of air is extremely low. However, variations in temperature can be extreme. From about minus 90 to plus 2000 degrees Celsius. Now you might think 2000 degrees Celsius, I would burn alive. No, quite the opposite, you would freeze. But why is that? Why would you freeze if the temperature is plus 2000 degrees Celsius? Remember that temperature is related to kinetic energy of individual atoms and molecules, and there are very, very few molecules over here. So they have high energy, which means high temperature, but there is only few of them. So if they hit you, you wouldn't even notice. And because there are only few of them, you would in fact feel very, very cold. To demonstrate that, the mean free path of molecules and atoms in thermosphere is one kilometer. And uh, in uh, my video on the atmosphere as a continuum, you will remember that the mean free path of molecules at the surface of the Earth, close to the surface, is 68 nanometers. 7 times 10 to the power of minus 8 meters. And here it is 1 kilometer. I would also like to mention that ionosphere is part of the thermosphere. Now, what is ionosphere? Solar radiation here 
ionizes gas molecules and atoms and creates positive ions and negative electrons. Now, flow of these electrons around would be current. But these free ions that uh, are in the thermosphere also bounce off radio waves, and that's why this layer is so important in the radio broadcasting, especially for AM radio stations. Aurora Borealis occurs in thermosphere, one of the most spectacular visual phenomena in our atmosphere, and I will talk about that in a separate video that is related to magnetic effects of Earth. For example, the International Space Station orbits in the thermosphere at the height between 320 and, 400 and 380 kilometers above Earth. The last layer in the atmosphere is the so-called exosphere, and it is approximately between 600 and 10,000 kilometers above the surface. Here, atoms and molecules can escape into free space, interplanetary space. Most of the satellites orbit in exosphere at the height of around 2,000 kilometers. Very little is known about exosphere as well as thermosphere and mesosphere. Exosphere is mostly just hydrogen and helium. I would like to emphasize that 10,000 kilometers is not fixed boundary, and I try to indicate that with this uh, dash dot line compared to these dashed lines that I used elsewhere. Very lastly, I would like to mention that notice that transition between different layers has suffix pause. So we call tropopause, stratopause, mesopause, and so on, transitional layers between different layers in the atmosphere where temperature has some pronounced changes with altitude. In these pause layers, temperature has very small variability with altitude, and we call these layers isothermal, because there is no change of temperature with height. Many people tried to teach me how to use chopsticks. I really tried. And every time when I go to eat Asian food, I practice, I try, and I never manage. However, I finally found how I can use them in a very, very good way. Until next video, goodbye.